In the final moments of the 97-98 NBA Finals, Game 6, Michael Jordan, who was regarded as the greatest of all time, rose up and sank one of his more classic last second shots of his career to put the Bulls up 87-86. They would eventually go on to win that game and their sixth championship and second three-peat, making them a dynasty all over again. A great shot and a great team. And yes, Michael is the greatest of all time, and neither you nor I have seen a better player than him. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Most people forget that Michael left 5.2 seconds on that clock. His team was only up one, which means the Utah Jazz still had a great opportunity to win that game with either a two or a long three. They called on their second option. A guy that had 10 points, 5 assists, and 3 turnovers at that point in that game to take a shot that would be the last chance that franchise would ever have at a championship. He missed that shot, and Utah never made it close again. But what if he had sank that 2 dribble pull up 3? What would that have meant for the Jazz, MJ and the Bulls, and Stockton and Malone's legacy? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC, StunnerGrow3.com, and these are my thoughts. To understand the capacity of that shot by John Stockton, we first have to understand the team he played for that year. The Utah Jazz in the franchise's history has won 60 games or better just three times in their 46 years. This was their second best season at 62 and 20, following their most winningest season in 96-97 going 64 and 18. They had arguably the best power forward in the history of the game in Karl Malone, a guy on the last legs of his prime years at 34, who was their leader, Iron Man, and the guy most wondered why a play wasn't ran for him to take that shot, seeing as he was 11 for 19 with 31 points at that time. Then there's their other leader, who was also on the tail end of his Hall of Fame career and the guy that took that fateful shot that barely missed John Stockton. He's hit that shot countless times, and he's also made that shot as a game winner on a few occasions as well. Then, there's the guy that drew up that play in Jerry Sloan. A Hall of Fame coach with as stellar as a resume as any coach in the history of the game, but missing just one thing, a championship ring. His closest opportunities came as losses to MJ and the Bulls in back-to-back -back years, 96-97 and 97-98. If there's anyone that wanted that shot to drop, it's Jerry Sloan. A small but important piece to this puzzle that also should be mentioned is the city of Utah. A place that constantly gets short-ended when you compare them in any way, and especially sports, to the other American cities. In basketball, players over the years have always given Utah the respect of being one of the toughest places to play, much less win a playoff game. Their fans are ruthless. Their team is always tough and the city will probably bore most to death before the game even starts. One thing they had was their jazz. Hitting that shot and sending the series to a game seven may have been futile because winning a game seven at home is likely but not a sure thing. But seeing that team win that game for Utah would have at least satisfied their hunger for the moment and who knows what may have happened had there been a game seven. Michael Jordan made a steal on Karl Malone with 20 seconds left on the game clock and the Jazz up 86-85. He could have ran the entire clock out before taking that last shot and was trying to until Russell started to engage him to the point Mike saw the perfect opportunity, went for it and made the cleanest move I've ever seen MJ make and stuck the mid-range jumper. Although he left time on the clock, the Jazz and Stockton were unable to score again and the rest was history. Had John pull off the surprise and send that series to a game seven, I think that would have been a shot to change history for the Bulls and Michael Jordan, or make him and that team an even bigger success story than that last dance team was. For MJ, it would have made his storybook ending even greater to possibly win a championship in a game seven which is one thing the Bulls haven't done in his time there. But I have to lean toward the Jazz, finally getting over the hump 
and defeating the Bulls in a Game 7 and robbing Chicago and MJ of a sixth championship. The chip that made him unquestionably the GOAT. The chip that made the Bulls a dynasty for a second time. It's one thing to three-peat once, but doing it twice is what sets the Bulls and MJ apart. Imagine MJ only has five chips today. He's tied with Magic, Kobe, and only two away from LeBron. His GOAT status would definitely be questioned then, along with the blemish of 5-6 and six that would have put on his finals record instead of 6-6. Six and six. Remember, that Game 7 was going to be in Utah. Imagine the atmosphere. How riled up those fans were going to be. How confident those Jazz players were going to be. And also how tired MJ would have been which doesn't get enough credit. He played over 40 minutes a game in that series, and in that game, played all but five minutes. He was gassed. He also lost Scotty to a back injury for pretty much the entire game, although he did play, but was a decoy for the rest of it. If there was a game seven, who knows how good Scotty could have been. The Jazz had more than enough to squeak through and win that game seven, and it would have put a huge dent in Jordan's and the Chicago Bulls legacy losing their last dance. It goes without saying that Stockton and Malone are probably the best duo along with Peyton and Kemp to never win an NBA title together. Carl went on to try and win one by jumping on the Lakers dynasty bandwagon in the early 2000s but was unsuccessful. Peyton jumped on the same bandwagon, also jumped on the heat wave and won a chip that only counts outside of the basketball world. But there's something to be said about winning with your own or original team. At least a team you helped build into a championship team. Not joining forces with other great players or tagging along to an already built team in a not needed role and adding to your resume. Winning in the 90s for Stockton and Malone would have catapulted them both to the pantheon of basketball. Some may argue they're already there, and that's true, but they are like at the back of the room, you know, by the bar or something. They're, they're not on the dance floor. Making that shot, going on to win a game seven, would have been legendary for Malone and Stockton, and would have proved you can win in a small market in those days. That you can win playing the right way, sharing the ball, undersized guards, pick and roll offense, post play, that Michael Jordan wasn't invincible in the finals as his career turned out to look in hindsight. As players, winning a championship is the only thing I'm sure they look back and wish they had a chance to feel. The celebrations, the parades, the ring ceremonies, the respect, the love. John Stockton hitting that shot at the end would have been the world for them both. Too bad in the 90s, Jordan wasn't willing to share worlds with anyone. Not on his watch at least. It's your boy JC Stunnergrow3.com and I'm out.